world's most loved comedy team, the Three Stooges. But Mo wasn't always the leader of the group. In fact, when they first started, the boys were almost interchangeable. The development of their screen characters was a slow process of evolution that took many years of refinement. Do that again. Do that again. It took, it took. He's wrong. Well, this is the way, isn't it? In the beginning, the Stooges worked for a brilliant vaudeville comedian who essentially created the concept of Stooges. He was a genius. One for him would be those Stooges. I've thought about many times the fact that he's the one that started it all. And without him, there would have been no Stooges. Ted Healy was born Charles Ernest Lee Nash on October 1st, 1896 in Kaufman, Texas. He moved to New York with his parents and grew up planning to pursue a career in business, but was bitten by the showbiz bug early on. He changed his name to Ted Healy and eventually found his niche on Broadway where he was performing with his first wife, Betty Braun. During the winter of 1922, they were appearing at the Prospect Theater in Brooklyn where Ted had a visit from a boyhood pal. It was this chance meeting that would forever alter the course of Ted's life and the history of film comedy. That friend was Mo Howard, born Moses Horwitz on June 19, 1897 in Bensonhurst, New York. Mo was always fascinated by the theater, and as a young boy, he spent most of his time at the local playhouses. He would watch the same show several times and concentrate on just one performer, a practice which served him well when he entered show business himself. In 1914, Mo ran away from home to get an acting job on a showboat in Jackson, Mississippi. After working there for two seasons, Mo returned home, and several months later, he and his older brother Shemp started a new act called Howard and Howard. They worked the vaudeville circuits, achieving moderate success until the winter of 1922, when Mo discovered that his old friend Ted Healy was headlining at the Prospect Theater. According to Mo, this meeting was essentially the birth of the Stooges. Well, there's controversy as to who were the first Stooges. Uh, I think everybody sort of agrees that Ted Healy was the number one Stooge, and he was a big vaudeville burlesque type comedian who was very popular in his day, and he was boyhood friends with Shemp and Mo Howard growing up in the same neighborhood. Uh, if you listen to Mo and his family, they sort of think Mo was the first Stooge. If you listen to Shemp and his people, he was the first Stooge. Uh, what it seems like in the early years, there were various Stooges floating in and out of the act. Uh, as one got married and had children, he left for a little while. Another person would come by and replace him. But, but basically, it was Ted, uh, Mo, and Shemp, some combination. Uh, they picked up Larry uh, after seeing him at a show in Chicago. The four boys worked the vaudeville circuit until Ted and Shemp left to join a Broadway show called A Night in Spain. During this period, Larry married Mabel Haney, and eventually he and Mo rejoined Ted and Shemp in the Broadway show A Night in Venice, which became a hit. This paved the way for better bookings and eventually an appearance at the prestigious Palace Theater on Broadway. A talent scout from Fox Studios hired them for Rube Goldberg's feature, Soup to Nuts. Healy was making over $1,000 a week while the Stooges' salary remained at the usual $100. See, the Stooges were my father's employees and they came as an act and he was the one that was paid and he paid them. And this caused a lot of friction, especially with Mo, because he was a better businessman than probably any one of the other four were. They didn't care for the pay inequity, but in their eyes, it was a shot at the big time. Unfortunately, the film only received lukewarm reviews, but the Stooges received high praise for their performance. Fox studio heads noticed the great reviews for the boys and offered them a solo contract. But when Ted caught wind of the deal, he immediately went to the Fox brass and forced them to withdraw the offer. In his eyes, they were breaking up his act, and after all, they were his employees. So when the Stooges learned that the deal was off, they decided to strike out on their own. Three boys left Ted Healy because they were offered more money in the Archeo Orpheum circuit. How much, I don't know. So he needed three replacements. They couldn't use the name of Healy Stooges, uh, 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 of the three Stooges. So they called themselves Howard, Fine and Howard. Shemp, Moore, and Larry. Now, Ted's got an audition of Stooges. Now, I never saw that type of comedy before. You know, you hit each other, poke your eyes. I never saw that. I, I, never, I never saw their act till I got an audition. I went to the audition, and I went up to see Ted. Hello to Ted. He gave me a bang in the head you never saw in your life, and I got so mad. I jumped on him bit his ear, grabbed his nose, hit him back. He says, you're hired. Get in the corner. <laughs> you know why he did that? Get the reaction from you. 
That was the whole thing. Ted had his new Stooges performing material that was identical to what Mo, Larry, and Shemp had done. So he was good to work for. When he was when he was not when he was not drinking, boy, he was he was a college graduate, you know. Went to college, Ted did. And uh, he always was a good actor, but he developed to be a great personality. He was the closest thing, as far as telling jokes, but as far as personality, the closest thing I ever seen to Jolson. See, he was the first person that ever played comedy off of somebody else. Up to his point in time, comedy was always a Charlie Chaplin or Harold Lloyd type thing where some guy was funny and he was the whole show. And he played off somebody else with the Stooges. When I first with Ted Healy, I used to go to bed at night and I saw hands. I saw, I saw his hands and fingers <laughs> when I in my sleep. That's all I saw with rehearsals, whacking and banging and all that. You know the first joke I ever did with Ted Healy? He said, what time is it? I said, 1 o'clock. He went, bung. I said, I'm glad it ain't 12. You know, <laughs> that was the first joke I did. <laughs> Ted was touring with his new Stooges, but Howard Fine and Howard were creating comedy of their own. Supposedly, Shem came up with the eye poke during a card game in which he was Larry beat him or something, and he was mad, and he just hauled off and poked him right in the eye, and Mo thought it was so funny that he fell out of his chair laughing and said, that's going to stay in the act, and that was probably one of the few things that the Stooges actually invented themselves. All the other things, the pie fights and the slapping and all that had been done for many years before. Even though Ted had his new Stooges, the chemistry just wasn't the same, and he continued to press the original Stooges into returning. I think the reason he hired us when the Three Stooges, it was for revenge for the three guys to see that they can be replaced. Not saying we are as good, which I don't think we were, but he, that was his mind that he knew we weren't as good. And finally, uh, thank God, we, we, went, we went up to Ted and said, Ted, we'd like to do our own act. He didn't fire us. And about two weeks later, we were rehearsing, we walked down Broadway, and I see Ted with the three guys. On a promise to avoid drinking, Ted won the Stooges back, but again, change was waiting in the wings. Shemp decided he wanted to leave the Healy Act for good. Uh, apparently his wife did not like Ted Healy, and uh, there's some various stories floating around, uh, some pranks that you know Healy pulled that uh, Shemp and his wife didn't take too kindly to, and uh, Eventually, Shemp just went out on his own. He'd had a very successful career on his own, but I don't think he made the kind of money that the Stooges ultimately made at Columbia. In 1933, Ted Healy and the boys signed a film contract with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. The boys had finally hit the big time. In their one year at MGM, they appeared in six feature pictures with big stars like Clark Gable, Joan Crawford, even Laurel and Hardy. And they also starred in a series of five two real short subjects, some of which were written as wraparounds for elaborate MGM dance numbers that were filmed but never used. They even filmed two of their shorts in a special format. They did a couple shorts that were in a experimental, I think it's called a two-strip Technicolor, and I'm not a real technical guy. But it was a very early form of Technicolor that they were experimenting with, and it's kind of lousy looking color, but it's color, and it's from 1933. It's very unusual. The feature films and short subjects were well received by the public, but the Stooges' relationship with Ted once again began to deteriorate. Their complaint was, all, was two things. One, that he drank too much, and two, that he didn't give him enough money. And I think the latter was really the problem. I think primarily because, A, of his drinking, and B, because of the inequity in the, in the pay scale. Uh, the Stooges were getting a lot of the laughs, but they weren't getting any of the money. And uh, I think they felt that they could be just as good without him, 
and make a lot more money and uh, they had to deal with a lot of his stuff he was drunk a lot of the time and um, ultimately they just decided to go on their own. So Ted stayed with MGM and the boys set out as a trio. It was decided that Mo would handle the business affairs essentially stepping into the Healy role. Off screen he was very much like what he was like on screen. Not that he was mean and nasty but he was clearly the leader of the group. Uh, he was probably the one who made most of the financial decisions uh, and arranged a lot of the bookings and things like that and decided what was best for the team. It seemed like he was the one who had the biggest say. Mo landed a one film deal at Columbia Pictures and if the results were favorable the studio would offer them a long term contract. So the boys co-starred with Marjorie White in a 20 minute rhyming short subject called Woman Haters. As soon as they finished, they began writing a treatment for another comedy called A Symphony of Punches, which they presented to the studio heads who were so impressed that the boys were given a seven-year contract with yearly options. A Symphony of Punches was retitled Punch Drunks and became their second short. But more importantly, Howard, Fine, and Howard finally received the billing that would stay with them forever. They became the Three Stooges. In December of 1937, Moe, Larry, and Curly were on their way to an appearance in Boston when they received word that their old friend and partner, Ted Healy, had died. Uh, there's a lot of controversy over the way he died. Um, he was supposedly involved in a barroom brawl, uh, the circumstances surrounding the brawl and who were the participants in the brawl are still subject to conjecture to this day, but uh, after this brawl he supposedly went back to his hotel room and was found dead there. Ted is not what they think he is, what they write about him. He was a nice man. Only, only bad thing he was a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. When he, when he drank he was, he was Mr. Hyde. It's too bad. We lost a great, great talent when he died at the age of 41. He was, he was a genius. One for him would be the Stooges. And he would drag me on the stage, force me to sing <laughs> on stage. And he was, I was never more than a foot away from him when we were on the road. And uh, of course, when he died, I was heartbroken because I loved him dearly. I've thought about many times the fact that he's the one that started it all. And without him, there would have been no Stooges. And uh, the fact that he was celebrating my birth which caused his death, of course, is highly unusual. It's, it's very strange. 